Enhancing counterterrorism and law enforcement collaboration was the focus of an Interpol border management operation targeting wanted terror suspects attempting to travel across Southeast Asia. Conducted as part of Interpol's Integrated Border Management Task Force, Operation Sunbird was carried out across all 10 ASEAN countries and brought together police, customs, immigration and maritime authorities to screen passports at 30 land, air and sea border points. One of the objectives of the Operation Sunbird is to increase the number of checks performed against Interpol databases with the, with the aim of uh, locating, identifying and arrest criminals and terrorists. So we are now using the MIND device, which is a portable solution that Interpol uh, put available for its member countries. Uh, in the framework of the Operation Sunbird 2, we have uh, delivered MIND devices to the Malaysian Maritime uh, Enforcement Agency. Uh, we are in the uh, Piang area now, uh, patrolling the, the sea. Uh, this is a routine control, so they have uh, approached uh, a ship that is carrying uh, sun. Uh, they are performing a simply check on, on, the, on the crew passenger. An operational command unit at Interpol's Command and Coordination Center in Singapore facilitated close to 5 million searches, resulting in 30 arrests and almost 100 hits against Interpol's global databases. All our coordinators in its sites are very cooperative. They've been monitoring uh, all uh, possible entry and exit of uh, persons of interest, and uh, we are actually using the MIND device and iBatch. At present, we were able to search 650,000 uh, searches, including arrival, departures, and uh, at present we have seven hits. One stolen lost travel documents and six uh, notices, diffusions, red notice and uh, blue notices. We can experience the, the connection, I guess, with the other Asian countries through the notices that we receive because every now and then they would send, through our NCB in Manila, they would, they would send notices and uh, advisories. So in that sense, we could feel that there is indeed cooperation among the countries in, within Southeast Asia. Prior to the operation, and with support from Global Affairs Canada, Interpol conducted a series of capacity building and training programs designed to familiarize officers with Interpol's broad range of global policing capabilities, including its secure global police communication system that can provide real-time access to the organization's databases. This phase is where we have built the trust, we have built the teams, and we have built the capabilities for them to be able to share what they have shared during Operation Sunbird and what we expect that they will go on sharing in the next months, weeks, or even year. This is the only way that we will build something sustainable and permanent in the ASEAN region, is creating this network of officers that they will know each other, that they have been trained each other, that they have discovered together what is Interpol, what they can do through Interpol channels, how they can use Interpol information and translate it all that in human relations, in professional relations, to go on consulting mutually after the operation. Individuals targeted by United Nations Security Council sanctions and the subject of Interpol UN special notices were also detected in the region. This important operational activity received the active and timely support from the competent United Nations services. The cooperation between Interpol and the United Nations has already proven its efficiency and added value for the sake of global peace and security. Its future and continuity require the active participation of member states and the exchange of information between Interpol, the National Central Bureaus, the Special Representative of Interpol to the United Nations, and the relevant UN Sanctions Committees.